Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we'll have for you is episode 4 of my FIFA 23 Bradford City career mode. If you do go on to enjoy, please make sure to drop a like on today's video for me. If you could join it, 20 likes on today's episode, that would be absolutely class. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road to 400 subscribers. Thank you very much for 300, that is massively, massively appreciated. Hopefully you guys can help me continue to grow on the second channel. If you're not already subscribed to my main channel, make sure to do that. The link is down in the description down below, but today... Once again, I have three matches for you. We will also have transfer deadline day. Apologies about a little bit of lag towards the last stages of last episode. I don't really know what happened there, but my PC had some problems. So I, I seem to be having quite a lot of PC issues at the moment. So hopefully it's all goes it all goes very well for today's episode. But I'm going to not miss any games this week. We're going to be playing Barrow away. We're going to be playing Colchester at home in the Papa John's Trophy. And then we're going to be playing Crew at home in the league. Obviously, we, we are doing a sim only Korean mode. So all these games will be simmed. We will also have transfer deadline day. I'm not too sure which day it's actually on, but we will also do like a live transfer deadline day, counting down the hours. If you didn't already see it, because I know there's a lot of lag towards the last stages of last episode, it was confirmed that Jake Young has left the club. He has joined Circle of Bruges on a two-year loan deal and he'll join us, I think, when he becomes 23. So you probably won't see Jake Young for a couple of years. I don't know how long I'm going to do this Bradford City career mode for. Obviously, Football Manager comes out very soon, so I'll be doing a couple of Football Manager saves as well, you know, with the beta and all that sort of stuff. But let's waste no further time Jamie Walker um, nothing to do with Jamie Walker Harry Chapman sorry wants to play this game he feels he can do a better job than Jamie Walker I I'll think about it I'm going to pick the team for this game against Barrow so I shall see you all in a moment four changes then for the usual team Hendry De James, Chapman and Issa all come in for Halliday Folds Walker and done I'm giving Chapman his chance if he proves me right then he will be able to continue in that role because I can't say I've been too impressed with Jamie Walker so far this season couple of tired players so we are resting a couple of players in there as well. Let's get on with kickoff. Barrow, do they have any former Bradford players? Niall Canavan is starting for Barrow. He's also their captain. Let's get into the first game of today's episode. Here we have it then. It will be Andy Cook to get us underway. Obviously, this game was very dramatic in real life. We equalised in the 95th minute and then threw it away in the 97th minute. So hopefully we can have a similar sort of game here, but hopefully we come out with the three points. Issa coming forward with the ball early on, but Barrow will eventually clear. Barrow looking to counter us here. Down there, left side. 11 cuts in. He finds number 7 who has all the time in the world. That's a fantastic save though from Harry Lewis. Number 7 coming forward here. Quite a promising attack here for Barrow. It's found number 3. Goes back to number 11. Dion Pereira with no tracking back here. It comes to number 10 who has all the time in the world. Fantastic save though from Harry Lewis. Not long left to go now before half time. Not a fat lot's really happened in the game. Harry Lewis has made a couple important saves. They have had a few chances but yeah they, they have definitely been the better side of Barrow. We're struggling to really create all too much. We'll leave it 10 minutes or so and then we'll look to make some changes. Let's get into the second half. Right there's an hour gone on the clock. We've not really changed anything there so far this half. So we're going to change formation. I'll update you what formation we're going with and the team that we're going to be playing with in a moment. So the five changes are Oliver Walker, Osadibe, Wright and Matty Platt on with Issa Pereira, Smallwood, Chapman and Odessina all coming off. We've gone to like a 4 triple 2 but the two DMs are now actually playing centre mid and the right attacking midfielder is actually playing right midfield. So a couple of changes there. We're going to change up the tactics slightly as well just to get them a little bit wider and a little bit higher up the pitch as well. Let's get into the remaining half an hour and hopefully we can find a winner. Barrow coming forward here, number 2 on the ball. He cuts it back to number 9, ball into the box. It's eventually cleared. The game's nearly finished here and our substitutes still haven't come onto the pitch. There's literally 5 minutes left to go as Barrow take the lead with 5 minutes left on the clock. The ball didn't go out of play for 25 minutes. 25 minutes and now we find ourselves behind. Well, we've got 5 minutes to try and save something which in real life is about 4 seconds. Oliver picks the ball up, finds Andy Cook, shoots, good save from the keeper. I presume we're probably not going to be able to find an equaliser. It's kind of one last chance. Walker with an absolutely awful corner. He's scrambling around in the penalty area. It's Osadibe with a shot. Oliver at the back post can't keep it in. And the referee has blown for full time. The first half, Barrow absolutely battered us. Should have been 4 0 up at half time. We tried to make the subs before the hour mark. They didn't end up coming on until the 85th minute. The game was pretty much already done by then. Frustrating, but we've got to bounce back now in the Papa John's Trophy against Colchester. Let's get into it. Here's some interesting news then. We have received a transfer offer for Lee Angle. He's struggling to make the match day squads at the moment. I do really like Lee Angle, but he's 28 out of contract in the summer. If we can get a decent fee for him, to be honest with you, I'm more than happy to see him move on because he's not really getting minutes. He's probably best for all parties if he does move on. We get a nice fee coming in as well. Harry Chapman obviously demanded that he started the last game up 
ahead of Jamie Walker because he felt like he could have done a better job. I think he touched the ball twice and he gave the ball away twice. So not impressed with that whatsoever. I won't, I'm just going to be honest with him. It's not good enough. You can't be demanding to play and then drop an absolute stinker. That's just not how it works at this club. Well, the negotiations have broken down for the angle. So it looks like, especially for this time being, he's going to be staying with the club. They considered our initial demand too high. So for the moment, Leangle will remain a Bradford City player. So this is how our Papa John's Trophy group lines up. Obviously, in career mode, you don't have under-21s or under-23s teams. So you just kind of play each other once. And then I don't really know what happens with the other game, to be honest with you. It's kind of a bit of an unfair advantage. I don't really understand how it will work. But there's only three teams in a group stage. We've got Colchester and Mansfield. Not an ideal group. I'll quickly pick the team. It will be the second string players and we'll see how they get on against Colchester. I would still expect our second team though to beat Colchester. Here we have it then. Here's how we line up for this Papa John's Trophy match against Colchester United. We line up in a 4-4-2 formation. We've got Colin Doyle in goal. A back four of Luke Hendrick, Matty Platt, Romney Critchlow and Jameis. In the midfield we've got Tyrick Wright on the left, Osadibe and Levi Sutton in the middle. Scott Banks out on the right and up front we've got Dan Oliver and Kean Harrett. A couple options on the bench as well. I definitely want to get Angle and Harry Chapman on. I believe there is only three subs on FIFA, but if it's five, then I guess we'll bring them all on. I do want to get Heath Richardson some game time because obviously he's labelled as the Wonder Kid. But let's get into this game. 6:45 p.m. kickoff. I think it's a little bit interesting. It looks like they've gone with pretty much their full strength team. Let's get into the game. Here we have it. Then it will be Colchester United to get us underway. Freddie Sears gets us underway for the first Papa John's Trophy match of the campaign. Let's start off with a win. Come on, City. But then Oliver looking to run the channels. He goes into Banks, plays a 1-2. Oliver finds Luke Hendry, gives the ball away. Now Colchester have an opportunity to counter-attack here. 15 picks the ball up. He goes inside to number 11. Back two. I think that was 15, but the shot goes wide in the end. Colchester come forward here. Number 19 on the ball. Cuts away from DeJamis. Can he get a shot off? DeJamis standing up very well. Shot comes in, but it's off the post and out for a goal kick. Harrop picks the ball up. He goes out wide to Tyreek Wright. Finds Vidane Oliver. Slots it through to Kean Harrop. Big chance. And the keeper's saved. It's a good save from O'Hara. But Kean Harrop definitely should be scoring that one. We go short from the corner. Banks on the ball. Finds Luke Hendry. Into Osadibe who shoots another great save from the keeper. Osadibe will take this corner. Probably the last action of the half. Banks wins the header at the near post, but it's an easy save for the keeper. Fairly even until the last couple of minutes there. I don't think either side's really had too many clear-cut chances. I think Kean Harrit should have scored that chance, though. Let's get into the second half. He's got Banks on the ball. He finds Vidane Oliver into Kean Harrit. What can he do with it? Back to Vidane Oliver. Back to Kean Harrit, who finds Tyreek Wright. And he's put it straight at the keeper. With an hour gone on the clock, I am now going to look to make some substitutions. We'll get Oliver off at Foley Angle. Scott Banks is also very tired, so we'll get Harry Chapman on on the right-hand side. We also probably want to get Halliday on for Luke Hendry. Can we make any more substitutions? Will it let me? It will, so you can actually just make all five subs. We'll make all five subs then, why not? We'll get Heath Richardson about half an hour of game time. That's if the ball does actually go out of play, because if it doesn't, then they'll all be getting five minutes again. Kian Harrop picks the ball up, he finds Osadibe into Levi Sutton, back to Lee Angle who shoots! <laughs> Oh, and I've no idea how he's put that one wide. That is a big opportunity for Lee Angle. He's had a couple big opportunities now. I still don't think he's scored this season, or if he has, he's scored maybe a couple at the most. That is a big chance. That could have won us the game. It In the end, hasn't. It probably will finish as a nil-nil draw. I believe that means it goes straight to penalties. Unless we can find something here, we can't. That is the full-time whistle. I believe now it does go straight to penalties. Or it doesn't. Maybe they don't know the rules on FIFA. It's meant to go to penalties there to play for the extra point. That hasn't happened and now it's transfer deadline day. There is a couple players that I have been looking at in the free agent market. I don't really have too many full scout reports of them so I'm just kind of having a look at their valuation and all that sort of stuff and I found this left wing back here. He's valued at £2 million. Now he's a free agent so we don't need to do any rushing into signing. We'll wait until they are fully scouted but there is some good free agents available at the moment. Like I said, I don't want to be spending multi-million pounds on Premier League youngsters who are obviously going to be really good with really high potential because I find that very boring. I want to try and keep the career mode as realistic as possible and a lot of our transfers in the summer were free agents or we paid low compensation packages for them. So once I get maybe more scouting reports, we'll go into that, but I shall be updating you by the hour if we get any transfer news on deadline day. 
our one down. We've received a transfer offer here for Matty Folds. If you're interested in this left wing back, Matty Folds probably will have to move on. Now, I really do like Matty Folds, but he's 24 now and he's only 61 rated. If we really want to be improving, he's valued at 375,000. That left wing back is valued at £2 million. So if 61 rated is valued at not even half a million, I anticipate that left wing back will be about 70 rated. I think this could be a good bit of business. Now, I don't want to scare these off. So we are going to lower this down to 650 and we don't want to sell him. I mean, they've offered 470, so we don't want to sell him for less than that. We'll submit that offer, see if anything does happen with that and I shall update you if it does. Here we go. Fold sale agreement. Now, we've not actually managed to get any more money, but with the second hour down on transfer deadline day, it's well above his market value. I think we are going to accept this offer. Now, like I said, I really do like Matty Folds. For me, Percy has been one of our player of the season so far in real life, but when an offer like that comes in, I feel like you've got to accept it. Three hours down on deadline day, the first hour, which hasn't received any sort of transfer update. Let's get in to the fourth, sixth whatever you want to call it. There's six hours left to go now. Four hours have gone, and we've still not got any news on Matty Folds. We are now exactly five hours into transfer deadline day and this looks like confirmation Matty Folds will be leaving the club. Thank you for your services over the past couple of years. I think he's been really good but it has only been a couple games in the actual career save and I think he's been decent but he's not really done anything to stand out so I don't think it's going to be too much of a loss for us but Matty Folds officially leaves the club. And suddenly I'm back. There you go. Confirmation Matty Folds has left the club. 470000 was the official transfer fee. I don't know how much specifically we get into the... Could have made 200 k more profit if you were more demanding. I don't think I could have done whatsoever. How much money is actually going into the transfer budget? If we have a look at the email, I'm struggling to find how you get into emails. It's right stick in, that is it. So press the right stick in and we have got 325000 into the current transfer budget. Like I've explained a few times, I'm not overly interested in spending actual transfer fees, but I can't anticipate too much more happening on deadline day. I'm going to wait until that left wing back has been fully scouted before we submit an offer him because I don't want to be overpaying on his wages and all that sort of stuff. But going into the final few hours, I can't really see anything else happening. If it does, it's probably not going to have enough time to properly go through now. But some interesting moves on there. Paddy McNair going out on loan to his at Stad Rene. Certainly think that's an interesting one. Harry got have got £270,000 for 33-year-old Jack Muldoon, I think, joined St. Mirren there. Down into the final hour, though, the transfer window is officially shut. And now let's move into the final game of today's episode against Crew Alexandra. We have received another transfer offer here for the angle. I don't know why they've waited until the transfer window is closed before submitting another offer but 440,000 is the fee we have been offered it is above his market value like I've pretty much accepted that Liangle will be moving on if you can get a nice figure for him that would be lovely to put into the transfer budget but if he does move you know it won't officially be happening until the transfer uh, the next transfer window which is in January now so I did put him on the transfer list because there's no real point in him being at the club I'm just gonna say I'm glad that we agree because he, he wants to go, he wants to move so like I said it suits all parties doesn't it let's get into this final game against crew it's been a long time since we've done a pre-match press conference so we will do another one here see what the media have to say and all that sort of stuff ahead of the match against crew Alexandra why are you sticking with Walker we had this question in pre-season as well didn't it and again I don't think he has been playing great but he needs to play games to get back into good form you know you don't get into good form by not playing games do you so don't really get that question the next one is how will you approach the game we won't underestimate crew we'll focus on the performance if you always perform well nine times out of ten you are going to get the result that go with it as well can you keep this great one going i mean i don't particularly think we have been on a great one one run to be honest with you but this is what i expect from us i always expect us to win every single football match so let's get into this game against crew it's not been a great episode not many goals in today's episode we're still yet to win a game so fingers crossed we can end today's episode with three points. Here's how we line up then for the final game of today's episode. We've got Harry Lewis in goal, a back four of Brad Halliday, Jan Songo, Timmy Odesina and Luke Hendry makes a start at left back to Jameis. Just a little bit tired 
from the last couple of games and obviously Matty Fold is no longer with the club so Hendry starts at left back Gilead and Smallwood in the midfield Dion Pereira in the 10 we've got Tyreek Wright out on the right Andy Cook through the middle and Arthur Dunn on that left hand side it's going to be a tough game obviously this one did finish 0-0 in real life very frustrating game because crew have played like 99% of teams have at Valley Parade and we weren't able to break them down fingers crossed though we can pick up the three points let's get into it here we have it then it will be Andy Cook to get us underway for the final game of today's episode Kelvin Miller does start as well for crew. Let's get into it. Come on. Andy Cook with a bright start here. Can he finish? Yes, he can. Six minutes on the clock. It's great play from Gilead to win the ball back. Slots it into Andy Cook. If you give him chances, he will score goals. Six minutes on the clock. It's Bradford City 1. Crew Alexandra nil. Dion picks the ball up here on the half turn. Great play from him. He finds Gilead who finds the back of the net. Alex Gilead has been all over the pitch in this first half an hour. He deserves that goal. Dion Pereira in the number 10. He's so silky on the ball. He's playing unbelievable in that position with half an hour gone on the clock it's Bradford City 2 crew Alexandra nil. Smallwood slots it through here into Arthur Dunn what can he do with it oh that's what he can do with it Arthur Dunn the youth academy prospect makes it 3-0 we are running right here it's great to see us finally converting his chances that is just beautiful play from Arthur Dunn it's Bradford City 3 crew Alexandra nil. crew coming forward with the ball here number 7 on the ball he shoots good block from Jan Songo Halliday should be able to clear the halftime whistle has been blown anyway I mean apparently we've only had two chances but we've scored three goals we've only had 40% of possession but at the end of the day we're 3-0 up that's all that matters in my opinion is the result let's get in to the second half and hopefully more of the same number 10 picks the ball up he slots it through here into 15 who shoots he drags his shot wide a little bit of a wake-up call for us there because we have started the second half a little bit sloppy we'll get Jamie Walker on in that number 10 position we shall also give Vinay Oliver a chance up front give Andy Cook a little bit of of a rest. See, I don't want to make too many changes. Can either of these wingers... Chapman can play right wing, can't he? Yes. We'll get Issa on as well to play out on the left-hand side. And is that it? Is that fact? No, that's four changes. So we may as well get Liangle on. Uh... No, you know what? There's no point forcing him get to get on the pitch. There's no point forcing five subs for the sake of it. I know we're 3-0 up, but we'll make them substitutions. I believe they have already come onto the pitch as well, which is great to see. Smallwood on the ball. Finds Vidane Oliver. Into Alex Gilead. Finds Richie Smallwood. Back to Gilead. Back to Smallwood. Into Aboisa who strikes. And he makes it 4-0. Issa's on. Off the bench. He makes it 4-0. Smallwood is absolutely shattered. So we are going to bring him off. We might as well put Walker as a central midfielder. We'll put Angle... Hey, you're nervous, bro. As the number 10, we'll get on with the remainder of this game and we are absolutely cruising. Number 10 picks the ball up, finds number 7. He goes out wide here into number 17, 21 on the overlap. Ball into the box, cleared away once again by Jan Songo. He gets in front of absolutely everything. Five with a chance off the underside of the bar and eventually we will clear. Angle on the ball, finds Aboisa out on this left-hand side. They cannot deal with Issa's pace. Plays a 1-2 with Viden Oliver. Oliver finds Angle, finds the back of the net. Bradford City 5, crew Alexandra nil. Wow, it's a five-star performance, isn't it? And that should see the end of the game very, very soon. A fantastic performance. This is what we need to see more of. That is full-time. A beautiful way to end today's episode. We might have only had 36% possession. We might have only had four chances, but we were so clinical in that game. A fantastic performance. We didn't have the greatest start to the episode. They were the disappointing draw. But we've ended it on a fantastic win and I couldn't be happier. Couldn't be in a better place now to end today's episode. I've no idea where that leaves us in the table. If you have a look at the standings, I mean, we're actually down in 12th at the moment. Two wins, two draws, two defeats, 12 goals scored, eight goals conceded. It's not been an ideal start to the season, but there's still plenty of time left in the season. Nothing is won by the start of September, is it? Got a chat as well here from Dion Pereira, basically saying that he's happy to be playing anywhere, even as attacking midfielder, as long as he's part of the plan. I thought it was one of his best performances of the season so far in that number 10 position. I know he can't naturally play there, and we have got two natural number 10s in Jamie Walker and Harry Chapman, but I personally thought it was absolutely unbelievable. But that is where I'm going to leave it for today's video. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. Hopefully there was no lag throughout the video. I'm sure you'll already know if there was, but fingers crossed there wasn't. If you could try and hit 20 likes on today's video, though that would be absolutely class subscribe if you are new as well we are now on the road to 400 subscribers so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on it's free to do so and it does massively help out get your thoughts on the transfer window and the start to the season as well down in the comment section down below thank you very much for watching have a great rest of your day and i shall see you all tomorrow at six o'clock for another video peace